Spiral Dial Sci-Fi with a Soundscape dark mass shimmered behind the sparkling glass windows before them, almost purple in the morning light. Jessica took a deep breath. It was beautiful, more beautiful than any land she had ever seen. Perhaps Pyrup was right. They should return to the earth. She felt it call in her and edged forward until her fingertips hovered just above the glass surface. Crack! A sharp shock of cold jabbed at her fingertips. She jumped backwards, a ripple of frosting spread outwards from the icy mark her hands had made, sparking a memory of her very first day on board, the taxi and the strange chill in the air, and Ant. Ant had been there. Shivering, she took another step away from the windows, only to trip over a stray leg. A faint moan emanated from it. Carry on, darling. I don't think the captain quite finished the job. An iPhone can't be doing with this lugging this great oaf down the stairs. Archie flicked the ash from his joints onto Morvan's eyelids, which were mercifully closed. Archie, knock it off. Hasn't he been through enough? Jessica crouched down, pulling Morvan's hair back from his forehead. His face bore a fine maze of concentric cuts, none more than a few millimetres deep, but drops of blood welled from them all the same. She shuddered. We need to get these dressed. Morvan, wake up! Wake up! Morvan made motions with his arms and legs which were not altogether unlike a stranded whale. Archie made whomping noises with his cheeks, finishing the last of his joint and stubbing it out on the window. Cut it out and help me get him up, Jessica said. Archie raised an eyebrow and cocked his head back towards the ornately carved doors, one hand to his ear. Don't be foolish, sister, Pyro hissed. This is our chance. We must go to Earth. Leave these pathetic morons behind. The captain will not sleep forever. As she spoke, Jessica heard the unmistakable sound of footsteps, heavy boots on metal. The crew quarters. She rushed over to the metal staircase she had descended after being fired so long ago. It sounded like there were at least two of them. And Michael? She didn't particularly want to find out. Quick, grab his legs. This time Archie didn't hesitate. They dragged Morvan over to the grand staircase, only to hear the unmistakable hubbub of pre-concert excitement welling up from the concert hall below them. Trapped, Jessica glanced back at the captain's office. Did she detect the faintest of clicking sounds? It seemed that the whole ship was waking up at exactly the wrong time. Dropping Morvan on the floor with a thunk, she closed her eyes and quietened her mind, preparing for the showdown, which would soon follow. What on earth are you doing, darling? Archie leant back against the wall, fumbling in his pocket and crumpled some hash into a cigarette paper. Getting ready to fight, Jessica said through gritted teeth. What do you think you're doing? Relaxation is crucial at times like this. A clear head. Violence is a last resort, darling. I'm disappointed in you. I've already compromised the safety of my heavenly soul to save your thankless backside last cycle. What makes you think that I'm down for a repeat? Oh, don't worry. You won't be expected to join in. Leave us to it and look after yourself. You always do. Suit yourself. He turned and walked away. As he did so, Finn jumped down from his shoulder and nuzzled Jessica's leg, the warm fur comforting on her skin, but not for long. 
a scratching sound behind her. She turned to see the carved doors quiver as if someone were testing them. They opened first a sliver, then a crack wide enough for a white finger to slip through the gap. First one, then two, then more. White fingers stained with drops of blood. The captain had risen. Jessica's days of deferring to rank were well and truly behind her. She was prepared to kick baby-killing ass, besides which she rather fancied her chances against the captain in a fair fight. The carved wooden doors slid open, a loud sound like the crack of a rifle echoing through the corridor as they reached their stops. The captain knelt on the floor before them, twisted, grin contorting their features, brandishing an extremely large shotgun in their hands. Jessica froze. It looked like the fight wasn't going to be so fair after all. The click of a lighter to her right drew the captain's attention. Darling, you shouldn't have, Archie said. Not a Benelli M4. That's far too good for them. A total waste of bullets. Allow me to fetch the rope. Let's put on a show. The captain's expression softened and they relaxed the pressure on the trigger for a split second, long enough for Finn to make his move. Leaping towards the crew staircase, he emitted an almighty yowl. The captain swiveled, taking a pot shot at the fleeing feline, but he had already disappeared. That animal has to go, Archibald. I can't stand another cycle like the last one. Of course, darling. Whatever you say, Archie edged closer towards the captain, stretching out his left hand towards him. Next cycle, it'll just be you and me, together, like in the before times. 
The double-crossing rat. Jessica wasn't about to let him get away with it again. She braced herself, poised to attack. But how? Morven's limp body still lay at her feet. He would certainly get caught in any crossfire. She was contemplating an acrobatic flip to disarm the captain and restrain Archie in one fell swoop when a disturbing cacophony of noises rose from the metal stairway. She had never heard anything quite like it. Bleating, barking, neighing, roaring, every kind of animal utterance imaginable. Animal! Her mind flashed back to the talent show, the zoo on stage, and the dismal array of cages below decks. They must have escaped. But how?